This video is going to cover some of the tips and tricks on using a Peter Pugger power wedger, a de-airing vacuum pug mill. And uh, I have two of them at school, one for stoneware, one for earthenware. They are fantastic. And this is just a quick video to show some of the tips that I have learned over the years using them. You can put clay at any stage of greenware into the Peter Pugger. You could put slip into it, you could put bone dry in it, you could put uh, clay that's, you know, maybe plastic and you just want to uh, mix it up a little bit and get it, uh, just kind of reactivate it. Um, uh, you could put um, leather hard. So the key thing to remember about the different stages of when you put it in, you might have to mix it for different lengths of time. If I put in a whole bunch of like plastic clay that's maybe just a little bit on the stiff side, I can fill it with that, add like a, a cup full, and I say a cup full, it's like a measuring cup full of uh, water and uh, mix it up for like five minutes, pug it out, and it comes out beautiful plastic clay again. That's already, if it's still on the plastic side, maybe the stiff side of plastic, but not quite leather hard. Once you reach the leather hard state, when you are mixing it and you want it to become plastic, you're going to have to take longer because it's going to have to mix in there and mush it and it's really going to have to break down the leather hard clay. If it's bone dry, you have to go even longer. Now, what I'm going to be adding to this uh, batch is going to be bone dry pieces that my kids um, didn't end up by uh, finishing. And so as I put them in here, I have augers that I'm gonna kinda go So around. as you can see, there are augers in here. There's like a big auger right here. There's some augers down low. I usually try to arrange it so the augers are in a position where I can um, still easily get the clay in there. And then once I, let me get one more here, or a couple. Okay, so once I get it fairly full, then I'm going to, clearly drop my phone on the floor. I'm going to drop my phone on the floor as I do that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna, I just might leave that in because that was kind of funny. Then I'm gonna put down the, the handle. I push down the handle and then, okay. Now once I have fit all that I can easily fit, then I'm going to bring the handle down. And one thing that you have to uh, kind of watch out for is you have to make sure that this, um, the um, plunger thing is behind the opening. Sometimes clay might get caught up back here and it kind of pivots the this forward and it gets caught. So you have to make sure that um, you can get it down there. And then I'm just going to pull down on the handle, okay? And by doing that, it mushed that up so now I can add more. Okay, so I've added like all I can and uh, I can't seem to get uh, this down any further. Now I need to actually mix it to make a little bit more room. So let's look at the control panel over here. So the control panel on the right, these are the controls for the vacuum. I don't need the vacuum yet. I'm gonna look at the, the stop and start and I got some clay on it there, you can see. Sometimes with this green button, because it's recessed, sometimes people put a little bag over it to keep it clean. I just keep wiping it off. But down here, this is the control that I wanted to mention. It's got a pug and a mix setting. Now, right now, I wanna keep it in the chamber, so I'm gonna put it on the mix setting, okay? And you have to make sure that the plunger is down pretty much before you do this, and I'm gonna hit mix. Okay, so as I do this, you can see that it lifts up. So I kind of hold down on it. And then once I feel, now once I feel it's mixed it up a little bit, I just hit stop, right? Okay, and then I can open it up. And that gave me more air space down in there so I can add more. So I'll keep doing that. I'm going to add, uh, hit mix, add, hit mix, add, hit mix. And you can see that all that dry stuff is starting to, crunch up. So now I'm just continuing to add as much dry clay as I can 
uh, until it, it can't fit anymore. And then I hit mix to rotate the augers. Remember to make sure that the plunger is fully going within the opening. Uh, sometimes it's tilted and you have to rearrange the clay to straighten out the, the plunger a little bit. Now that I've been adding a lot of dry stuff, I'm going to add some water. And being pretty full, I'm probably going to add uh, three quarters of a gallon. I don't want to mix it on dry for too long or it will tax the motor. The water is going to help it to flow. I want to show a little trick that I have learned over the years. Sometimes the water might drip out because when I'm mixing, I might mix it for a long time. So I just wedge a little measuring cup in there. So if water wants to drip out, it's going to go into this cup rather than all over my counter and then all over my glaze buckets. Oh, and this is counter height. And I'm going to show you a trick that I do because this is kind of high. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay, but it hurts my shoulders. I mean, I'm 5'5", five five, so it hurts, uh, it hurts my right shoulder in particular. So I'll show you a trick to um, make it easier to operate. Okay, so I've added my three big cups of water, so it's like three quarters of a gallon. Now I'm going to just hit mix again. That makes it, it makes it flow a little bit more easily. Now I've got more space. I'm going to try to get a little bit more clay in here. And this will sound obvious, but I'm going to say it. Always check to make sure you have nothing but greenware clay. Um, if you put something else, like if a tool makes it in there, a sponge, uh, a bisque-fired piece, it could be really, really bad. Um, let's say worst case scenario, and I know this from experience because I've had bad things happen. Maybe kids get a sponge in the bucket of Reclaim, and that sponge, when it goes in the pug mill, it might break up, and then as you pug it out, you have these nasty chunks of sponge in your clay, which of course makes it impossible to throw on the wheel when you're throwing, and suddenly you have a chunk of sponge. Or the worst case scenario is, one time I had a bucket, and I keep these buckets at my sink, one time I had a bucket where, um, you know, it's all mucky and it's usually slip with chunks of uh, uh, dry clay in it. I had a student who um, somehow got a, a needle tool. It was the, one of these short wooden handled needle tools um, and it was in the bucket. You know, they had just dumped their water bucket out or something. And I'm digging down in there because it's all mucky and stuff and I dig down in there and as I dig, that needle tool went right underneath my fingernail Oh, it was excruciating. Um, and I've also had them end up in the pug mill. Like if kids put clay in the pug mill, sometimes they just aren't, you know, as careful as I am. And uh, a wooden handled tool has gone in the pug mill and it splinters. You get splinters everywhere. You get the metal piece uh, in there somewhere. It's really dangerous. And of course, then we would have to discard all of that clay. You might have a 35 pound batch of clay that you have to discard because someone got a tool in there and it's broken and it could be really tragic. Okay, so I've got all of my dry clay in there now and I might still have a little bit of room left. The key is I want it to engage and I want it to mix. If I don't have it full of clay and I have water and dry clay in there, it's more or less just gonna spin in the chamber. It doesn't have enough uh, friction to engage and to actually mix. So occasionally I might need to put a little extra clay in there. I don't have any more bone dry clay, um, but I'll look at, around and see if I have anything that I can add. I found a few more pieces of mine that were in my damp box um, that I just 
I don't have time to finish. Tomorrow is our last day of school, and I'm just trying to uh, get as much of this stuff recycled and put away until uh, the fall as I can. Okay, even though I added a little bit more, it's not enough to engage. So now I'm gonna just grab some clay that I just recently plugged out. And this is good plastic clay, but I'll just add it to it to be a space filler basically. Now, here comes the trick. The trick is I, I get to a point when I'm pulling this down that it gets kind of hard and then I have to really pull. Well, I found, um, I've been doing this job for, I don't know, 22, 23 years, um, that when I would pull like this at this height, it started really hurting my shoulder and I didn't realize it for the longest time. So now I have like some shoulder blade issues, but I have a solution. I made a strap, and this could help people uh, with their pug mill at various heights if you want. So you're not using your arms. I'm gonna use gravity. So I made just a big loop out of uh, strapping you know, fabric, and I sewed it together. Strapping fabric that I bought like at a fabric store. I'm going to now step on this. Here, I'll show you. Okay, so here's my looped strap, and now I'm gonna step on it. So as I come over here and I push mix, I'm going to step on this and I'm literally pulling it down with my foot rather than pulling it down with my shoulder. When I started going to PT years ago for my shoulder, I pretty much knew it was coming from this. It was the placement and you know I might put all of my body weight uh, hanging on that handle to pull it down uh, because I had it so full. And um, I was going to PT for my shoulder and I told the uh, physical therapist when I came up with this strap and she thought I was brilliant. Yeah, not really. I'm gonna add as much as I can so it will engage and mix. And occasionally, I need to scrape off what's around on the side of the plunger. So like here on the sides where it accumulates, I have to kind of scrape that off a little bit. Okay, now this is the part where it's up kind of high. It's hard for me to do that without hurting my shoulder. So again, I'm putting a strap on, gonna step on the bottom of it, hit mix. And I can hear the air coming out occasionally. So really, I'm trying to get all of the, the gaps of uh, air gone. Okay. Now we're looking pretty good. I'll show you what the inside looks like right now. All right, so this is what the inside looks like right now. It's uh, kind of chunky. There's not a lot of space left, just a little bit. I am going to add one more cup of water because um, I think it's definitely too dry as is. All right, so one more cup of water. And again, I put the little um, cup underneath the vacuum area because when it's on mix it it you know it's keeping it in the chamber and sometimes it will pull some water or some clay into the vacuum chamber i always try to clean that out whenever i see it happening but um that this is helpful when it's really i notice that when i'm mixing the bone dry clay because i'm mixing it for a really long time it's just uh it takes a probably i would estimate about an hour for it to 
fully mix and become plastic after it's engaged. So now, as I put that down, not all the water was able to kind of go to the bottom. So there's some water there. I'm gonna have a little bit of a mess and you might see some water that starts to come out. I'm gonna hit mix. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I definitely had some water. Woo! Water came out there. Now, okay, so th this chunk back here, this is the chunk that's causing it not to seat properly. So I have to get this part down because I need to have room for the plunger to go in all the way. And occasionally I've got some of this stuck to the top. I'm gonna scrape this down a little bit and I really wanna make sure that it's gonna be able to close and it's gonna be able to lock. I'll get this part off the side right there. All right. Okay. Now we're gonna try this again. See if I can, oops, sorry. See if I can get this to close enough. There we go. I can lock it. And now I'm gonna just walk away and let it mix. I'll stop it so I can talk. I'm gonna let it mix for uh, probably a good 45 minutes to an hour. Now, I will know that it's mixing when I come back and I put my hand on the barrel of it, I'll be able to feel some warmth. Um, if it's not creating a friction and it's just spinning and spinning in there, you won't feel warmth. But um, even if, I, if that were the case, after a while, eventually it's gonna create friction. But um, I do try to check it after about 10 minutes to see it, is it creating friction yet. So it's gonna be probably 45 minutes after it creates friction, I would assume. And once it's locked, of course, I take my foot off of the strap. Now I'll clean up the mess that I made when the water oozed out. Okay, so the pug mill has run for, it's 45 minutes or an hour or so. I know it's mixed and it is ready to pug out. Now, I might have some troubleshooting issues and if I do, getting the, uh, the pressure to go up, I'm gonna show you what to do with that. So now I'm going to turn it on pug, I'm going to hit start, and then I'm going to turn on the vacuum, and the speed control, you can have it set on fast or slow, I have it set on fast, and I want to also shut the valve up here, and you can see the pressure is going up. Now if the pressure weren't going up, I would want to make sure that I'm pulling down on this to make sure that I'm getting good pressure on the seal. And you can see it's starting to come out already. And as it comes out, then I'm just gonna like cut it off and bag it up as it comes out. Now, if it weren't plastic enough, I could put it back in, add, mo add more water. If it were too plastic, I could always add some drier clay to get it to a better consistency. Now at the very end, I turn off the vacuum when it starts to kind of slow down. And by turning off the vacuum and releasing the pressure, it allows the next couple of inches to kind of come out. And then when it's eventually done, I kind of, I dig out a little bit of a concave area right here. So that way when I put the cap on, it fits snugly.
Now, I do look in here to see if there's any big chunks. If I see something big that's right there in the top, I'll take that out and I'll also put that into the bag. Now, all these dry things, see the little dry things that are around the edge there? I'll put those inside, but again, remember this is bone dry stuff, so you would not immediately mix and pug out without making sure that the bone dry stuff was thoroughly, thoroughly mixed in. Um, I love the Peter Pugger. I think it's great. Um, I used to have one other pug mill. I can't remember what the brand was, um, but it wasn't a vacuum de-airing one, and I didn't like it. It felt uh, less, less uh, helpful to me in the studio. Oops. So um, having a, a big batch where I can make, you know, 30 pounds of clay at one time of recycling, it's, it's really, really valuable in the classroom setting when I have, you know, 125 kids every day using clay. So uh, shoot me any questions below. Um, I'll write some more comments in the text below. Uh, if, you know, when I'm putting this together, if I think of anything else that I left out, I'll try to add it below. Okay, I did think of one other thing, and that is sometimes you have to check the vacuum chamber. Um, because I mixed it for so long, sometimes some of the clay will end up here in the vacuum chamber. So I like to make sure that I get that out periodically. And um, I'm sure that some people will be looking at this and saying, good gosh, what, she, what did she do? There shouldn't be that much clay in there. But in the classroom setting, sometimes I just can't get back here and catch it easily. And I might put in more than I should, but it still works for me just fine. Now here I also want to really emphasize how important it is to clean certain aspects of the pug mill whenever you're trying to use the de-airing feature. You can't have any clay or residue on the seals. Now the seals are going to be things like here at the vacuum opening, you have to clean with a, a sponge or a plastic scraper, not a metal scraper because you don't want to damage the aluminum. So you want to clean the seal to get all the clay, any chunks, any residue off. You're going to clean the rubber seal. So up at the top of the plunger where that rubber seal is, that has to be very, very clean. The lid of the vacuum chamber also has a rubber seal. Um, I'm just not showing it in the picture. That has to be cleaned. And then the cap and the end of the pug mill. Everything has to be clean in order to get a good vacuum seal. And then I'll wipe this off. Get all the little crusties off of here. I wipe down the rubber seal on this. If you're ever having difficulty with the vacuum seal, always check all of your rubber seals around here, around the top. Just wipe everything down. You gotta keep those seals free of any chunks of clay because if you have even the slightest bit of chunk, that can keep your pressure from increasing and uh, it can just slow up the whole process. It won't de-air if you got a little chunk there. So that's it. Now, I am storing this for the summer. I'm going to lock it and I'm just going to make sure that uh, this is sitting on there, the cap is on, and it'll be fine when I come back in August. It might be a little bit stiffer. I'll just add some water as I mix in there. Uh, and that's my Peter Pugger.